الرحمن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي ليس لأوليته ابتداء ولا لأزليته انقضاء وانحسرت الأوصاف عن كنه معرفته وردعت عظمته الأقول والذي لا تواري عنه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على سيد البطحاء سيد المرسلين والأنبياء أب القاسم محمد المصطفى وعلى الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعلها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بيمنه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولولاه لصاحة الأرض بأحلها واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم واذكر في الكتاب إبراهيم صلوات Congratulations and tabriq to all of you respectable brothers and sisters as we are commemorating the birth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And inshallah, as you know, we have the Milad and Unity program coming uh, next week with our Sunni brothers and some of the non-Muslim neighbors also participating, participating in that. So please remember and tell your friends um, the birthday of the Holy Prophet is one of the best occasions to uh, remind ourselves with the seerat, with the lifestyle of the Prophets of Allah. Allah Himself has reminded His Messenger. Allah Himself reminded His Messenger by saying, Wazkur fil kitab Ibrahim, Wazkur fil kitab Ismail, and so and so forth. Remember in the book Ibrahim, remember in the book Ismail. So, in the tafsir, it has been said that remembering the, mm, the revolution brought by the prophets of Allah, every prophet brought about a divine revolution. Divine revolution doesn't necessarily mean that an Islamic government ended up being formed. That's not the point. That depends on the support of the people. They brought about an Islamic awareness movement based on the divine value system for the niyyat and for the hard work for the sake of establishing the social justice, adalatun ishtima'iyya, the social justice phenomenon of Quran. This is the Islamic movement that they ran. All the prophets ran their Islamic movement and they worked, all the messengers of Allah ran their Islamic movements and they worked hard for that. So whether the government was established or not is besides the point. <coughs> and our Holy Prophet, 
managed to establish the first Islamic government, which was uh, in Hejaz, and the capital was Medina. So defending the divine revolution, which is the common denominator, divine revolution is the common denominator between all the prophets and messengers of Allah, they worked hard, they executed and ran the Islamic revolution based on the uh, divine values. Defending the divine revolution is a faridah and duty mentioned in the Holy Quran. It's the job of every person to defend the, mm, uh, the divine revolution. That's first of all that we need to remember when we are commemorating the birth of the Prophet. One of the ways that helps to defend the divine revolution is reminding the people. This is why we bring about the reminders, hold the birthday celebrations, not for the sake of a decoration or uh, you know, a cus customs or traditions or our cultural norms. We do it as a Quranic duty because we are supposed to give reminders to the people. So when they recall the hudus, they will recall about the istimra. When they are reminded about how the devolu divine revolution was brought into being by the messengers of Allah, specifically our holy messenger, they will also remember how to continue the divine revolution. Because our scholars and teachers say the secret of continuing the divine revolution of Allah is the same secret of bringing about the revolution. As long as an ummah and nation continues to remember and pr practice those of the factors that brought about the revolution, they will be successful to continue that revolution as well. This is the purpose why we hold the birth celebrations. It's not something cultural. It's not something traditional. It has a Quranic value to it. So now, the revolution brought by all the prophets of Allah, all of our a'imma alayhi salatu wasalam, is on the same path based on the divine value system. And Imam al Hussein alayhi salam has taken that to the climax, uh, making it a symbol of Islam, because the sort of sacrifice he uh, presented was never done by anybody. Although uh, the you know the status of all the uh, you know Ahlul Bayt is of you know similar in the sense that they are all part of one nur, and uh, you know as per their niyat and intentions. If any of the Ma'asum was present in the place of Imam al Hussein, salam, they would have done exactly the same what Imam Hussein did. They would have said exactly the same what Imam Hussein said, without a difference, because they are part of one nur. And actually, is a, there's a story when Amir Mumin salam, was passing by, uh, uh, going towards the Battle of Safin. He passed by Karbala, and this is where he started to cry. And Abdullah ibn Abbas was, he was next to Imam Ali salam, and he asked the reason. He saw the, he, the Imam Ali salam crying. And uh, Imam Ali said to him, if you knew, you would also have been crying. And then Imam Ali salam slept there at that spot. And after a while, when he woke up, he said, I saw in the dream, my son Hussein drowned in blood and calling for help, and there's no one coming to provide help. And then he turned to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and said uh, about that time, that when that time happens, in other words, then be patient. And Imam Hussein alayhi salam replied, I will do sabrun jameel. The, the appreciated patience in Islam. Appreciated patience, sabran jameel means a patience where you have zero complaint against Allah, even in your heart. 
Uh, some people don't express with their tongue, they learn some knowledge, some arif of Quran, so they don't start complaining through the tongue, but deep down in the heart they feel, why is Allah doing that to me? Why me? I pray, I fast, why is Allah giving all these bala and tests to me? So deep down in the heart they have a complaint against Allah's wisdom. Then they are not ahl, they are, don't have sabrun jameel. Sabrun Jameel is that sabr where you have zero complaint against Allah's decision. You are radi and pleased with what Allah is doing. So and Imam Ali Islam, at that occasion, uh, on that incident, he said to his son that, uh, you know, uh, what are we going to see from Ali Abu Sufyan? That means how much pain we are going to go through because of Ali Abi Sufyan. And then he said that certainly your father went through the same what you are going to go through. So this is the point I was mentioning to you. That is when it comes to the Ahlul Bayt, they all went to the same pain. They all went, their niyat was similar, their actions were similar, their statements were similar. Although Imam Hussain was the one who Mm, uh, who did the gr this greatest sacrifice, but all of the Ahlul Bayt are similar. They would have also have done the same thing. If Imam Hassan was there, he would have done the same thing. So they all get the similar, similar uh, sawab in the eyes of Allah. So coming to the point I was talking about, why we celebrate the birth anniversaries of the Holy Prophet, it's a shame to see what happened in in the, uh, by the Saudi cult and Hijaz putting a ban on celebration of the Milad of the Prophet, announcing punishment for those who celebrate the Milad. Uh, this is yet another uh, addition to the long list of evidences that uh, this uh, Saudi cult has nothing to do with the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the Prophet, Vazkur fil kitab Ibrahim, Vazkur fil kitab Ismail. So, in the tafsir, our scholars say, remembering the divine revolution in Qilab Ilahi, divine revolution brought about the messengers of Allah is necessary and it's effective in order to maintain the. Uh, revolution brought about all the prophets of God and all the imams, which is a farida to defend. And that farida to defend the revolution is, it, it facilitates to help the farida when, when we are reminded about the previous revolution. This is why we hold the celebrations to remind, remind ourselves. So we are reminded about what brought the revolutions in the beginning and remembering those factors that brought the revolution in the beginning will help us to maintain the same factors as the continuation because the factors are the same to secure the revolution. This, they are same factors that brought about the revolution without a difference. So as, as long as we, the followers of the Prophet, continue the sunnah of the Prophet in terms of defending the divine revolution of Prophets and Imams, as long as we follow his sunnah, we will be assisted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what was the sunnah of the prophets? The sunnah of the prophets is what we learn. Look at the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the story of Prophet Musa. If you recall, Musa alayhi salam is taking Bani Israel, the, his followers from Bani Israel towards the waterfront and Fir'aun with his forces, Pharaoh with his forces is following, chasing them, right? By when the time, the time arrived when Prophet Musa reaches the waterfront and so ahead of them is water and behind them is the army of Fir'aun. This is where some people, Ashab of Prophet Musa, Quran says, فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ 
qala ashabu Musa inna la mudrakun. So at that occasion when these two uh, groups of people are now closing up to each other, right? Ahead of them is water, behind them is Fir'an with his swords. So now they're seeing their life between two dangers, drowning and sword. So they gave up. They said, we are now, you know, basically under their, we are now seized, we are now captured, we are under their control now. So this is where you learn the highness of the leader. Highness of a leader is learned at the time of difficulty and hardship. Not only, uh, it's, it's not easy to judge the highness of the leader in the happy times, although his highness is still the same, but it's not easy to judge. But it's easy to judge the highness of a leader in the hard times. So, so this is when the when Prophet Musa heard that remark, he said, Kalla in Ma'iya Rabbi Sayyahdeen. That means no. So this is not the, the this is no danger in the eyes of the Prophet Musa. That's not a danger. So he is not feeling afraid at all. Prophets of Allah, messengers of Allah, Imams and Awsiya, they never get afraid. They are afraid of Allah alone. So he says in the Ma'iya Rabbi Sayyahdeen. So along with me is my Lord who is going to guide me. Please say salawat. <laughs> Although when we learned from the history of Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, our beloved messenger who is the most superior of all and superior than Prophet Musa, when he was in the hardship and he was chased similarly by the mushrikeen of Makkah and he went into the cave and mushrikeen came right till close to the door of the cave and that sahabi and companion started to cry and the voice was going outside of the cave he thought this is the end of the story we will be killed this is where our holy messenger sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam said the statement that la tahzan in Allah ma'ana don't be sorrowful certainly Allah is with us so the difference our Orofa say that Prophet Musa when he was facing the hardship he said kalla inna ma'ya rabbi that means certainly along with me is my Lord so he mentions himself me first and then is my Lord second. So mentioning himself first, mentioning Allah second. That's Prophet Musa. When our messenger comes in similar situation, he says, La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. So he brings Allah first, ma'ana with us, us second. This is the highness of the Holy Prophet, that at all situations, he brings Allah first. This is his highness. In the eyes of the Holy Prophet, all he focused on throughout his life was Allah. Himself was nothing. He never focused on himself, right? He always focused on Allah alone and this is why when a person has that kind of tawakkul which is unique even among the anbiya even among anbiya you find that high tawakkul of the holy prophet is not found although all of them have tawakkul but that highest level of tawakkul is not found so when someone has that sort of tawakkul you will find the help of allah is also of that sort and the ta'eed of Allah is also of the same sort. Now, Quran says that, um, uh, 
uh, so Prophet Musa's policy is mentioned by the Holy Quran, Rabbi bima an'amta alayya falan akuna zahiran lil mujrimin. Oh my Lord, for the sake of the ihtiram, respect of the ni'mat that you have bestowed upon me, falan akuna, I will never be zahiran lil mujrimin. A supporter of the criminals. This is the respect of the ni'mat that Allah has given him. In the respect of the ni'mat that you have given me, I will never be a supporter of the criminals. So anyone who wants to find out whether he is on the Sarat al Mustaqim, the straight path, here is the way. Here is the way to judge yourself whether you are on Sarat al Mustaqim or not. Are you supporting the tahuts and criminals in your life? Or not? Because the sign of the person who receives the ni'mat of Allah is what is mentioned in the Holy Quran in the statement of Prophet Musa, Rabbi bima an'amta alayya falan akuna zahiran lil mujrimin. Now Quran says, aqim as salata li duluk as shams ila ghazaq al layli wa Quran al fajr. So in this short verse of Holy Quran, in short statement of the Quran, Allah summarizes all the five prayers which are wajib. So Bahrain and Maghribain and the Fajr. So, so now, um, uh, and obviously uh, prayers has the Fatiha, la salata illa bi Fatiha til kitab. Without Surat al fatiha no prayers is considered to be a salat. Okay? So, in the prayers, five times a day that we pray, so we pray minimum ten times to Allah that, اِهْدِنَ الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صَرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Guide me, guide us to the straight path. Sarat al which straight path? That straight path, the path of those upon whom you provided your ni'mat. Sarat al ladina an amta alayhim. Ten times a day, it's wajib on every Muslim. Ten times a day to repeat and ask from Allah. Guide me to the path of those upon whom you provided the ni'mat. Ten times a day we are repeating this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So, so um, if we have the ni'mat, like I said, the sign our scholars say, if you have the, that ni'mat that we are asking in the Salat, in Surah Al-Fatiha, if you have that ni'mat, the sign is what Prophet Musa has said, Rabbi bima an'amta alayya, فَلَنْ أَكُونَ ظَهِيرًا لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ Oh my Lord, for the sake of the respect of the blessing that you have awarded me, I will never be a supporter of the criminals. Now this is where the Adhamat of Imam Khomeini Ridwan Allah comes in, right? In our Tariq al-Mu'asir, where we were sitting idle, and the Tahuts were playing with our destiny opening, you know, killing as many people as they want, torturing as many people as they want, and we are praying and fasting, shakiyat or salat, they said, ah, okay, wajaif infaradiyya, individual deities, and we think we are very mutadayyan, very religious. Rabbi bima an'amta alayya, falan akuna zaheeran lil mujrimeen. So, Today it was Masjid al-Aqsa and tomorrow it will be Najaf taken away and Karbala taken away and Medina taken away, right? Greater Israel. And we will be busy in our prayers and fasting and zakat and hajj. There were people doing hajj in the time of Imam Hussein as well. Ahmaq people. Performing hajj and Imam Hussein is doing Umrah and Mufrada and they are performing hajj. And there are so many ahmaq even today. And Allah doesn't stand in need of them either. 
كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله Allah want the, the pearls to be taken up, to surface up. Those nukhaba, those nice people to surface up. And those are sufficient to do the job. We stand in need of Allah to understand, to obey. So now, this is the reason, this is one of the reasons we emphasize so much. In the middle of the Battle of Safin, Amir Mumin Islam started to pray. And some of the Ashab objected, yeah, this is the time of, of jihad. There are arrows coming and you are, uh, you know, doing your salat in the middle of the battle. Ahmaq. Lot of religious Ahmaq people are around. Ahmaq. And Imam Ali al-Islam replied back, innama qatalnahum ala salat. The only reason why we are fighting them is the prayers. If they understood that, would they object on Imam Ali Rasulam? There is nothing new you find objection on going on in the, the Islamic leadership. It's nothing new. People were doing etraf on Imam Ali Rasulam. Jahil and Ahmaq and Ghabi, the best description of some people. So, Rabbi bima an'amta alayya, so my hands are going to stand for you, my Lord. My eyes are going to serve your goal and purpose, my Lord. My feet are going to tread the path of yours. Not going to end up in service of Tahut and their agendas. Paid or unpaid, doesn't matter. Some people are unpaid servants of Zalimin. Because they are doing what the Zalimin want them to do doing things which are causing insult of Islam, ihanat of Islam, but they are doing it. Whose purpose is that? A little bit? No. Zalimin are benefiting from them. Who benefits law applies. If your action benefits the Zalimin, then this action belongs to the Zalimin. Whether you are paid a salary or not paid a salary, that really doesn't matter. So, this is one of the reasons why we emphasize on the Salat, right? It's because of the barakat, our teachers say, it's because of the barakat of the Salat that a person can stand in the face of the criminals. It requires a lot of courage to do that. So, there are two types of people. Some did the ahad towards Allah, but then they turned their backs towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although they were not supposed to do that, they did the ahad, but they did. وَلَقَدْ كَانُوا أَحَدُ اللَّهَ لَا يُوَلُّونَ الْأَدْبَارَ وَكَانَ أَحَدُ اللَّهِ مَسْؤُولًا So this is the category number one of people towards the Prophet. They did the ahad and covenant. They're not going to turn the backs to the Prophet. They're not going to leave the field without permission, seeking permission from the Prophet, never leave him alone, continue to support the messenger on the divine agenda, never get afraid, they will stick to the Prophet, they will continue to support him. But they thought that's dangerous. So they turned their backs to the Prophet in order to defend their life and lifestyle. What Allah has to say to them, Say, escaping, running away is not going to benefit you. Even if you run away from the death, it's not going to benefit. I will قتل, or getting from getting killed. What isn't? Even if you end up living, you will be living for just a short while. But they didn't realize that. That's the interesting part. Those people who think they can, they run away from their farida and duty, they should understand they can never run away from death. Even if they avoid it, it will be a short while. And that short while is simply not worth. Category number two were the people who were min al-mu'mineen or rajalun 
صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا Among the Mu'mineen, there are some men who had uh, fulfilled, uh, who have uh, been faithful towards what they, what ahad and covenant they did towards Allah. Now among them, there are some who have already given their blood. They became martyrs already. So much is going on in this world where we are living, right? The whole Islamic world is is full of blood and bloody acts. So there are some people, there are two types of people. The first category which I just mentioned, the second category are the ones who fulfilled their ahad towards Allah. So now among this category there are some who have already given blood and among them there are some who are waiting for shahadat. But they are prepared. They are prepared. Those who are alive sh must fall. If they are serious towards their to Allah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they must be in this category. Among them there are some who are waiting, waiting to be killed in the path of Allah. And they did not make a change. Some people, uh, you know, when they uh, their son dies, they start repenting. I wish I wouldn't have sent my son for that. Because now again, hubbud dunya overwhelms their mind and their soul, right? So they start to, start to repent over what they have, service they have provided. And there are some people who are sitting behind, far away, because they want to keep a distance and keep away from everything going on. So they simply cannot be, uh, you know, uh, cannot get any sort of harm from it. So they keep a safe distance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the people to become, uh, to re recognize their fariza towards the divine revolution. And Allah says, So now, coming to this ayat of Quran, this ayat, we learn from this ayat that uh, the kuffar, the, the, the tahuts were strong enough. And now there are people who, who used to think that they are so strong, we cannot stand a chance in front of them. So, um, and the tahuts themselves thought that they are too strong. No one can do anything against them. And when that happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the mustadafeen to overcome the same tahuts and breaks their ide idea of being unbeatable. And those people who were sitting and thinking that it's not our job, just leave it on Imam Sahib al-Zaman That's not our job. Islam, Allah, very great scholar. He, he gives beautiful examples. His examples are remarkable. He used to say in a lesson that we are, if you are sitting in the middle of the night, tomorrow there will be sun rising. Do you turn on the light? Or you keep the light shut? Why do you turn the light on? Tomorrow there will be sun rising. Because you don't want to stay in the dark, right? This is the response to those people who are sitting idle, not doing their farida, and leaving it up to doing tawakul, reading their farida on the shoulders of Imam Sahib al-Zaman That's his job. We have nothing to do with that. Let him handle his job. We want to protect our dunya. We leave our job on the shoulders of Imam salam. So these people are doing what? Uh, keeping the light off. Although we know tomorrow sun rises, but everyone turns the light on in the night. This is how some people are. They fail to understand. Zaygh. 
they have zaz and tilted understanding of Islam. Kaj fahmi. There are so many. They are not less. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, then there were some people who thought, uh, why should we stand in front of the tahoots and live our comfortable lives when we don't even know if the Prophet is going to return back safely from this battle or not. Maybe he just dies. Maybe the kuffar, mushrikeen, overcome the Prophet and he doesn't come, come back at all. Look at what Allah says. All these thinkings have been replied. All this phenomena has been replied back in the Holy Quran. Allah responded to all these ways of thinkings. بَلْ ظَنَنْتُمْ أَيَّنْ لَنْ يَنْقَلِبَ الرَّسُولُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ أَبَدًا so these people thought that Prophet is not going to return back. Now what made the difference? What made the difference is the end of my speech. What made the difference is the fact which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us that the fact of the matter is that mm, the victory is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'eed and Nasr is always from the ghaib. This is what these people missed out, big time. They failed to understand that victory does not depend on numbers. Victory does not depend who seems to be strong and who st seems to be weak. Victory does not depend on how much armaments and silah and, uh, and wasail and asbab you have. Because this is what also some people say, right? We don't have all these things. So did you think all the Ambiya have tanks? <laughs> you are ahmaq. You didn't understand the Holy Quran. If you talk about wasail, wasail, wasail. None of the Ambiya had those wasail that you are talking about. But they have tawakkul after performing their fariza towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the... This is how you bring about the victory which comes from Allah and the ta'eed from the ghaib that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the victory that Allah gave to the Holy Prophet is the ta'eed from the ghaib which the munafiqeen never thought of. And they don't understand and don't realize because they don't have the iman in their heart. It requires the iman inside the heart to realize that nasr is always from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah provides the nasr to those people um, who um, have taqwa and tawakkul on Allah. Nasrun min Allah wa fatfun qareeb. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide us the tawfiq to perform the fariza towards the divine revolutions of the prophets and the imams. And to make us worthy, to make our blood worthy, to be gifted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be presented in front of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Make our blood worthy enough that we can present it to Imam al Hussein and Ali and al Akbar and Abu al Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. To follow the footsteps of the shuhada and join the qafila and caravan of the shuhada who have never done khianat towards the ahad that they have given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Ya Allah, 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 ya Allah. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Wahzul al-Kuffar wa al-Munafiqeen. اللهم منصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم منصر واحفظ وأيد علماءنا الربانيين ومراجعنا الربانيين لا سيما الولي الفقي قاعد المسلمين اللهم منصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين اللهم فك عن الأسراء المسلمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وطابا وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان 
وجعلنا من أنصاره وأشياعه وأتباعه وأعوانه بجاه محمد وآله الطاهرين Let's recite the ayat al-kareem five times for سماحة العالم المجاهد شيخ زكزكي and all those مؤمنين who are in the زندان جيلز of بحرين شيخ سلمان and others آيت الله نمر علي نمر others and all the مؤمنين in the jails of بحرين and Hajaz and Pakistan and everywhere else and all the Mujahideen who are defending the Atabat Al-Muqaddasa in Iraq and Sham and for all the Mu'mineen who need our dua. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaytan Ar-Rajeem Amman Yujibu Al-Muhtarra Iza Da'ahu Yakshifu Al-Suu Amman Yujibu Al-Muhtarra Iza Da'ahu Yakshifu Al-Suu أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد من سورة الفاتحة for all the شهداء of Islam